Hey everyone, our next lesson in our unit of light is going to cover Snell's Law. Now here's the man Snell's Law is named after, Dutch astronomer Willebrord Snellius. What a name. We learned in the last lesson that when light goes from one medium to another with a different optical density, that the light will change speed. Light will also change direction in most cases. Snell's Law gives us a mathematical relationship between the angle at which a ray of light exits a medium and enters another medium. Remember, when we're taking angle measurements in these cases, we always want to take the measurement from the ray to the normal, not from the ray to the boundary of the medium. So let's say that we have a ray that's going from water down here into air. air is a less dense medium, so this ray is going to speed up when it moves from water to air, and it's also going to bend away from the normal. The relationship between these two angles follows this equation. The index of refraction of water times the sine of this angle of incidence is going to be equal to the index of refraction of air times the sine of this angle of refraction. And that's Snell's law in a nutshell. Using Snell's law, we can take angle measurements for a beam of light traveling through an unknown medium and use those values for the angle to determine what the index of refraction of that unknown material is. We can also use Snell's law with a block of some known material to predict how light would bend through that material. Refraction and the bending of light through different media is responsible for some pretty common optical illusions. If you've ever seen a straw that looks bent when it's put in a clear glass of water, it's because of the difference of index refraction between the water and the air. In this case, the straw isn't right here where it seems, but our eye has been tricked because of the bending of the light. When we're looking at an object underwater, the light rays coming from that object have been bent. But our eyes don't know that this ray has been bent at some point in between the object and our eye. So our brain assumes that the object is in a position that it would be if a light ray were coming from right here, assuming that that light ray moved in a straight line all the way from that object to our eye. So when we look at an object underwater, we actually see it in a different place. So this fish would seem like it's up here while it's actually down here. So if we were spear fishing, we would have to aim below the image of the fish in order to strike the fish with the spear. Water also has a magnifying effect because of the bent rays. When we look straight down at an object, it'll seem like that object is closer to the surface than it actually is. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this, but sometimes when you're trying to cross a shallow stream, it'll seem like the bottom is closer to the surface than it actually is. So when you step into what looks like really shallow water, your shoes will get wet because it ends up being deeper than what it looks like. We're gonna finish off this video lesson with a couple example problems, and we'll discuss other examples of refracting light in class next time we meet. In our first example, we have a ray of light that goes from air into water. Air has an index of refraction of one, water has an index of refraction of 1.33. It begins with an angle of 40 degrees with respect to the normal, and we need to find the direction the beam will be going once it's in the water. We start out by writing out Snell's law. The index of refraction of one medium times the sine of the angle with respect to the normal while it's in that medium is going to be equal to the index of refraction of the second medium times the sine of the angle between the normal and the ray in that second medium. Let's say that our first medium is air, so the index of refraction of air is one, the angle of incidence is 40. Second medium is water. Index of refraction of water is 1.33. And the angle of refraction is unknown. We can divide both sides by 1.33. So we get the sine of our second angle equals 0 0.483. Then we take the inverse sine of both sides. And we get an angle of 28.9 degrees. Once we get our final answer, we should double check to make sure it makes sense based on the concepts we learned in our previous unit. Since that ray is going from air to water, it's going from a less dense to more dense medium, so the ray should be bending towards the normal, which means the angle between the ray and the normal should be lower. Since this angle decreased, I know I probably organized Snell's law correctly in this case. In this next example, we have a ray of light that goes from acetone into an unknown substance. The angle of incidence is 52 degrees, and the angle of refraction is 73 degrees. 
we need to find the index of refraction of the unknown substance. So we'll start with Snell's law again. Medium one is going to be the acetone with an index of refraction of 1.36. The angle between the ray and the normal in the acetone is 52 degrees. The index of refraction of the second medium is unknown, but we know that the angle between the ray and the normal is 73 degrees. So we can just divide both sides in this equation by the sine of 73 degrees, plug this all into our calculator, and we get an index of refraction of 1.12. Now again, to double check ourselves, since we have a ray that's going from a more dense medium to a less dense medium, that ray should bend away from the normal, meaning our incident angle should be less than our refracted angle, which is the case. Next time we meet, we'll talk about cases where light gets refracted because of a difference in air temperature. This is actually pretty neat and the reason that we can see mirages. Because hot air is less dense than cold air, light's going to refract when moving between areas of significantly different air temperatures. And we'll discuss the consequences of this next time we meet. All right, I hope this was helpful for you guys. Make sure to write down any questions you have about Snell's Law, and I'll see you guys soon.